Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Welcome to my video on understanding Cook's distance using SPSS. In counseling research, we use linear regression to determine the contribution of an independent or predictor variable on a dependent or outcome variable. And as you can see, looking at these fictitious data have loaded in the data view in SPSS, I have one predictor variable, coping skills, and one outcome variable, overall functioning. So I'm going to perform a linear regression here, I'm going to analyze, and then regression linear. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. And here I'm really only interested in Cook's distance. So I'm going to put overall functioning as a dependent variable and coping skills as the independent variable. But I'm not going to make any changes here on the right except for under the save button. You can see that we have predicted values, residuals, distances, influence statistics, and prediction intervals, as well as the ability to create coefficient statistics. But here I'm just interested in distances and specifically Cook's distance. Cook's distance is a measure of how much influence a predictor variable has on the predicted value of the outcome variable. Specifically, it refers to how far on average predicted y values will change if the particular record is dropped from the data set. So it's important here to understand the difference between the term outlier, term leverage, and the term influence. Now, Cook's distance is under, of course, distances. And over here, you can see influence statistics. However, Cook's distance is a measure of influence. It is not designed to detect outliers or to indicate leverage. So let's refer to the predictor variable here, coping skills, as the x values. And the values in the outcome variable overall functioning, we'll call those the y values. So you have a univariate outlier. If a specific record is unconditionally unusual in either the x value or the y value, however, being an outlier doesn't necessarily mean it's a regression outlier. A univariate outlier is not necessarily a regression outlier. A regression outlier is a record that has an unusual value on the outcome variable conditional on its value of the predictor variable. So now moving to the term leverage, and we can see under distances there's a selection for leverage values. Leverage indicates that a specific record has an unusual x value. The value of x is far from the mean, suggesting it has leverage on the regression line. The farther away the x value is from the mean of x, the more leverage that record will have on the regression fit. Regression coefficients are not necessarily influenced by a great amount of leverage. However, when we have a great amount of leverage and an outlier as it relates to the y value, a record will exert a strong influence on the regression line. And we refer to this as influence. So I'm going to perform this re regression. So I'm going to continue and then OK. And again, I'm not really interested in uh, the output from linear regression. I'm just inf interested in producing Cook's distance. Uh, but before I go and look at Cook's distance, which appears in the data editor, there's a table here of residuals statistics that includes Cook's distance. And it gives you the minimum, in this case 0 0.0, and the maximum, in this case 0.0. Four, five. So we know the maximum value of Cook's distance will be 0.45. So moving back to the data editor, we can see right away that that maximum value is associated with 
record 1008. And just to confirm that we have no other values near this, we can sort this as uh, descending, and we can see we have 0.45, and the next closest one is 0 0.06, so quite a distance away. So I'll sort the ID again uh, ascending. So when examining the value here of Cook's distance, the question is, does this exert an undue amount of influence on the regression line in this linear regression? Meaning, should we investigate this record to see if it's a candidate for deletion? Well, there are a few different theories on this. One is that for any Cook's distance value that's less than 1, we should just move forward and not really worry too much about the influence. Another theory is we should evaluate Cook's distance based on 4 divided by n. Now in this case we have 100 samples, so 4 divided by n would be 0.25. And in that case we would be concerned about record 1008 because 0.45 exceeds 0.25. And yet another theory is to look at the Cook's distance relative to the other uh, Cook's distances. So if you suspect that one Cook's distance is deviating quite a bit from the trend established by the other Cook's distances, uh, that is what we should consider, not so much the specific value of Cook's distance. So we can do this through uh, the chart builder, graphs, chart builder, and I'm going to go to scatter dot and drag in the simple scatter. And I'm going to put the Cook's distance on the y-axis, and then for the x-axis I'm going to use the ID. I'll click OK. This will move back to the output. And we can see here that all these Cook's distances, except for the one case, are really clustered fairly close together. They're, they're down here all below 0.1. And this 0.45 really stands out relative to these other Cook's distances. And arguably, even if this particular Cook's distance were less than 0.2, Two five, so say around here, it would still be far away from, that value would still be far away from the other values, the other Cook's distances for these observations. With the value we have of 0.45 and the distance that this point is from the other points, and evaluating it in light of the four divided by n rule, we could safely say that this particular record does appear to exert undue influence on the regression line. I hope you found this video on understanding Cook's distance in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.